Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. We're talking about getting back to the moon today, specifically um, looking at NASA's Artemis program and how that stacks up against SpaceX and their Starship program. What's really fascinating here is that it's kind of like a clash of styles. You know, you've got on one hand, like this big government agency, NASA, with the uh, incredibly powerful but very expensive space launch system. And on the other hand, you've got SpaceX with this radical idea of a fully reusable spacecraft. It's like the old guard versus the disruptor, but in space <laughs> with you know, giant rockets. So before we go any further, for anyone just joining us, it's been over 50 years since we last walked on the moon during Apollo. So why is everyone suddenly so keen to go back? I wouldn't say it's sudden. I mean, scientists have always been interested in the moon, but now you've got like uh, this added potential of lunar resources, like water ice for fuel and life support. That makes it strategically important. And plus, it's like a stepping stone, right? You know, we can use it to learn how to live and work on another world before going further out. So the moon is kind of like a what? A base camp, not the destination. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So that brings us to the main players in this lunar race. For Artemis, you have the SLS rocket, and for SpaceX, you have Starship. So give us a rundown. What are we talking about here with these uh, these heavy hitters? Well, the SLS is a beast, no question. It yeah. came out of NASA's earlier Constellation program, and you know it can carry a massive payload to low earth orbit we're talking 130,000 kilograms hold on so for people listening at home how much is that like how many elephants are we talking about here uh -huh. well more like three statues of liberty okay now that's what i call heavy lifting right but the problem is for missions to the moon that payload capacity drops a lot to something like 27,000 to 43,500 kilograms and here's the other thing the sls is completely expendable one use and then it's space junk. Talk about an expensive fireworks show. And speaking of expensive, your notes here mention that the SLS has, well, a small budget issue. That's one way to put it. Each launch is estimated at about $4.1 billion. Okay, that's a big number. It is. Now compare that to what SpaceX is trying to do with Starship. Their goal is to get launches down to between two and $20 million per launch. Wait, hold on. Did you just say millions, not billions? That's not even like a rounding error? How is that even possible? That, my friend, is the power of reusability. SpaceX is going all in on this idea. You see, the super heavy booster, which is the big one that gets Starship off the ground, it's actually designed to come back down and land upright, ready to fly again. And they want to do the same thing with the Starship spacecraft itself. So it's like a giant, what, cosmic boomerang. Yeah. But haven't there been a few problems with those Starship landings? I mean, I've seen the videos. Well, yeah, there have been some uh, explosive landings, let's say, but that's kind of to be expected with any new technology, especially when it's this ambitious. But they actually had a major success with their IFT-5 test flight recently. They actually caught that super heavy booster using their launch tower, the Maxilla. Oh, oh yeah, I saw that. It was like some straight out of science fiction. So what you're saying is we got one rocket, the SLS, which is built on, you know, this legacy technology. It's got a huge price tag and a tendency to uh, become a very expensive lawn dart. And on the other side, we've got Starship, which is pushing the limits with reusability, but it's still kind of in the like testing phase. Mm -hmm. So how is this all going to shake out? Who do you think will win this new space race? That's the million dollar question, right? And to answer it, I think we need to look more closely at reusability and not just in terms of costs, but also how it changes the speed of innovation and how it could completely change the future of space exploration. Okay, now I'm really interested. Let's get into it. So reusability, everyone says it's like the holy grail of space travel, but can you explain why it's such a big deal? Sure. Imagine like for every single flight you took, they had to build a brand new 747. I mean, it just wouldn't make any sense. The costs would be insane and things would move so slowly. So that's the game changer with reusability. Right. So no more tossing a multi-billion dollar rocket in the trash <laughs> after just one use. Exactly. With Starship, SpaceX could launch many, many times a year, maybe even every month using the same hardware. And that obviously lowers the cost of each launch by a lot, and it lets them improve the technology much faster, too. So it's not just about saving money. It's about being able to constantly improve the technology. Yeah. Think about it. Every time they launch and land successfully, they're getting all this data that they can use to refine their designs, make improvements, and push the limits further. It's a totally different way of approaching spaceflight. 
And how's all that lining up with the Artemis program and the SLS? What's the latest with the delays there? I mean, they've already had to push back Artemis the Third, right? Yeah, it's not looking great. Artemis the Third was supposed to be the mission to put astronauts back on the moon, but it's been pushed back to 2026. 2026, that's what, over two years from now? Uh, it seems like they're always stuck in this pre-launch mode. Meanwhile, SpaceX is out there, like, duct taping rockets together and launching every other week. Uh -huh. Well, maybe not quite that fast. OK, maybe that was an exaggeration. Uh -huh. Yeah, just a little. But you see the difference, right? SpaceX has this fast, flexible approach. They see a problem. They try to fix it. They try again. The SLS is just bogged down in bureaucracy and, well, politics. And that really slows things down. It's the classic big government agency versus the nimble startup story. Except this time, they're building moon rockets. Exactly. But here's the real kicker. Your notes say that NASA is jumping on the Starship bandwagon for Artemis III. It's true. They're actually going to use SpaceX's Starship as the human landing system for Artemis III. Hold on. So even though NASA has spent billions on the SLS, they're going to rely on their competitors' technology to get astronauts to and from the lunar surface. Yep. That's the plan. Wow. That's got to sting a bit. Doesn't that make you wonder if the SLS is even worth it at this point? It's definitely a big vote of confidence for SpaceX and their approach. And it begs the question, is this the beginning of the end for the SLS? Will NASA change their whole strategy and fully embrace reusable technology? So let's recap. We've got NASA with billions invested in the SLS facing all these delays. And now they're turning to SpaceX for help. And then you've got SpaceX moving fast, perfecting their reusable rocket. And they seem to be on track to get to the moon with or without NASA. What a story, huh? It's kind of poetic when you think about it. This massive government program, years in the making, billions spent, and it could be the scrappy little company willing to try these crazy ideas that actually gets us back to the moon first. It really shows you how fast things are changing in space exploration, you know? They could... It makes you wonder about the SLS, though. I mean, if Starship keeps having these successes, what happens to it? Does NASA just keep spending billions? Or will they, you know, switch gears completely and go all in on reusable rockets? And what happens if SpaceX is really able to make space travel cheaper and more frequent? I mean, that opens up all kinds of possibilities, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Like, imagine asteroid mining becoming a real thing. Space tourism. Maybe even, like, manufacturing in space. Yeah. What if we could get rare Earth minerals from asteroids instead of having to mine them from the Earth? That would be a game changer. Okay, now I'm getting really excited about the future. Yeah. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Huh. What are the biggest challenges Starship faces in the near term? Assuming, of course, that there aren't any more um, explosive landings. Yeah, well, every time you try to do something new, there are going to be challenges. For Starship, safety is a big one. They need to keep refining the system, proving it's reliable, especially with humans on board. And don't forget about landing on the moon. It's not exactly a landing strip up there, is it? Right. You've got these crazy temperature swings, radiation, dust, no atmosphere to speak of. So... Lots to think about. Definitely. But, you know, everyone is working on these problems. It's not a question of if, but when. And when Starship lands on the moon, whether NASA is along for the ride or not, mm. what does that mean for the future of space exploration? What do you think? Giant leap for mankind or just another small step? Honestly, I think it could be a turning point. If Starship works, it proves SpaceX is on the right track. And I think it would inspire a lot of people, you know, get them excited about space again. Maybe it'll even kick off a whole new era of space exploration, one that's all about innovation, collaboration, and pushing the limits of what's possible. It's funny, isn't it? The race to get back to the moon may turn out to be just the beginning of something much, much bigger. Yeah, I like that. Well, on that note, we'll leave you with this thought. We're watching these two giants, Artemis and Starship, going head-to-head -to, -head to get back to the moon. But it's not really about who gets there first. What really matters is what we learn along the way and what we do with that knowledge. That's what will define this new era of space exploration. So, thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll see you next time. Your Space Journey